If you're a regular listener to our experimental stereophonic broadcast, you'll know that we begin each one with some directions for setting up and adjusting your equipment. There may, however, be some points which are still not quite clear to listeners, so this morning we've invited Professor Stanley Unwin, an authority on this, as on so many other subjects, to tell us something about stereophony in his own way, perhaps with an illustration or two. Professor Unwin occupies the chair of stereophony in the College of Directional Electroacoustics, and he... Oh, my goodness! Professor, are you all right? Uh, <coughs> well, yes, I, I, I think I'm so. sorry, listeners. Professor yeah. Unwin did occupy the chair, the one you've just heard collapsing on your right. Are you all right, Professor? Yes, um, uh, I think so. This piece of chair sticking out of my epiglody, you know, the Adam's apple over yes. there. But I think it'll heal up all oh, right. Oh, I'm so glad. I was afraid you might have damaged your seat of learning. Oh, no, 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 that's all right. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, oh, that's no. fine. Well, let's pull up another chair for yeah. you. Mm. Oh, thank you for that. Yes, well, you know, well, you know really what happened to that chair? What, what was it? Well, what happened was, and uh, it was a polter guidance of extrasensory perception. I see. You see, uh, Professor Groden Hudel Stoutsflas and Groden of Leipzig, as an authority on this polter guidance extrasensory, where you know you get flying bars of chocolate soap through yeah. the air uh, and, and flying saucers. I don't mean the flying saucers, the Martians, no. Landy. Uh, your authority is uh, the wobbling picture on the wall and the. Yes, a little bit. Yeah. Mm. And the, uh, That's what happened, though, is it? Oh, yes. And Thank then, you. And, as I say, the piece is sticking out in my throat. But I yes, think it's up yes. right. Well, look, let's, may we get down to the, the subject in hand? Yes, stereophony. Do. Mm. Uh, how does stereophony affect us as people? What's the psychology of it? Well, uh, may we begin at the beginning? Yes. You see, um, uh, where Darwin's origin of the species... Are you an authority in Safab? Uh, yes, uh, as far as men and women are concerned. Yes. Mm. Well, look, in the eardroves, uh, sounds impinge on the ossiclade. Now, there is a little stirrup pump with shave and the anvil shave with the ear trove. These are all corollaries and things that happen yes. in really life. Um, and where the directivity does up into the ear trove drums and reflecting from surface surfaces. You're speaking anatomically at the moment. Oh, yes, definitely. Mm. But yes. the mental precept of that and the pigeonholes of the mind does show a deep thunder mould, and it can be in perspective done, you know. Yes, well, thank you very much, Professor. Mm. Um, what sort of equipment should one begin with? Uh, does it have to be expensive? Um, well, first of all, a chassis is a phantom mould. Mm -hmm. You can buy any ironmonger's grip for throw and seps and place it at the bulbs, not in a push-pulley high the side, but symmetrically disposed, so that it comes through into one ear, which is on the right of the drove of the other. <laughs> yes. Perhaps one can add to it a little later, though. Oh, yes, uh, definitely. Well, you've got to take a space either side and tread it in back. You mustn't fall over the back road. <laughs> no. Oh, no. But you can, you can pile it up like bricks, though, in Oh, the it, it can be built. It mm. does. It's a creative therber, which mm. is coming through to the yes. modern age. Oh, yes. The, you've obviously been interested in this for some time, haven't you? Oh, yes, long before the bore. <laughs> yes, right. and uh, therefore you, you've perhaps collected some examples that we could hear, you know, about yes. it? Yes, well, actually... Um, I've got my little special uh, stereophony boat moat noise. Uh, yes, I and, see. Um, and, uh, and what's what's that thing that you, you've got just there in your hand? What, what's that? Well, you see, the boat is um, shaped not in like the ordinary boat. We plough mm. it way through the water. Yes. This well, itself actually is the starting handle. It is. Right. <coughs> 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 Prof <coughs> Professor! <coughs> Come back, can you? Can you get back? What what happened then? Well, actually, uh, the rotating, which is exploding most, actually it's designed on Sir Mortimer's wheel, and it flopped right through well, the bulkhead. I, I hope you'll be able to repair it all right. Well, I suppose a ceiling wagger or a string, a brown paper, these things, we can solder up. It'll be all right, I think. All right. Well, have you, um, have you possibly recorded anything uh, on land that we could hear which might be a little yes. safer? Do you think? Yes, indeed. Mm. Uh, here I have a multiferio stereo gradle, yes. which was recorded of the movie Trail Train in the marshalling yards at Newcastle under Struthy. <laughs> and there we did a dangle it and dangle it of our stereothomics microphobia, which people can buy in a stationary white po paper office at Sixpence Post free or if they want that. But in that Martian yard, and uh, there it is, it's a beauty look. Thank you very much. Well, let's do some shunting. Yeah. 
Yes, well, there it is. And uh, as I say, with the rotatal peripheral velocity of this type of recording and proximity to the trains, uh, it's offered very much for the uh, enlightenment of mm. the erudines and ordinary mm. listening peat loafers. I felt I could almost smell the smoke there. Oh, yes, well, the suffocale, if you yeah. do enjoy um, carbon dioxide, yes. it's there. And, and perhaps uh, engine drivers can enjoy stereophony too. Yes, well, uh, if they enlighten with the uh, stoker on either side to keep his eye through the window yeah. on the kind of oncoming traffic. M may we dare now to look ahead? Do you th feel that we can look forward to even greater advances in the stereophonic field? Yes. When you can multiply by through four or five dough, you have the feely on the one, because Aldous Huxley again, the brave new worm, you know. Yes. Uh, and also uh, on those other great, uh, the smelly, which you will come through to give you the whole atmosphere, and you'll get Ben Sausage out of your left louderscope if you put the money in. These are great things for the future, of course. They are indeed. You know, you sound very confident, and I'm sure that engineers such as yourself, Professor, will always give us something to think about. I'm sure of that. Thank you very much for oh, coming. Not at all. I'll return to the universe curriculum, if I may. Yes, certainly. Yes. Well, there you are. I, I, I don't think I can uh, really sum that up. Now let's sit back and relax for a minute or so as we listen to the Crawford Light Orchestra playing a perky little tune called Perky Puppet. <laughs> 